Good morning. It's the uh, Feast of St. Therese, the little flower, who is known for her love. And so let's together sing number 483. Do three verses now of this short hymn and three verses at the end. <coughs> Where charity and love prevail, their God is ever found. Brought here together by Christ's love, by love are we thus bound. With grateful joy and holy fear, God's charity we learn. Let us with heart and mind and soul now love God in return. Forgive we now each other's faults, as we our faults confess, and let us love each other well in Christian holiness. <clears throat> Have a little technical problem here this morning. Falling apart. So we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. We uh, come into church this morning as sinners, and uh, we are uh, humble about that as we ask God's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who open your kingdom to those who are humble and to little ones, lead us to follow trustingly in the little way of St. Therese, that through her intercession we may see your eternal glory revealed through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever A reading from the book of Job. Job said, Pity me, pity me, O you, my friends, for the hand of God has struck me. Why do you hound me as though you were divine and insatiably prey upon me? O oh, would that my words were written down, would that they were inscribed in a record, that with an iron chisel and with lead they were cut in the rock forever. But as for me, I know that my vindicator lives and that he will at last stand forth upon the dust whom I myself shall see. My own eyes, not others, shall behold him. And from my flesh I shall see God. My inmost being is consumed with longing. The word of the Lord. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Of you my heart speaks, you my glance seeks. Your presence, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. Do not in anger repel your servant. You are my helper. Cast me not off. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus appointed 72 other disciples whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am ascending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. Whatever town you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, the dust of your town that clings to our feet, even that we will shake off against you. You know this, the kingdom of God is at hand. I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom on that day than for that town. The Gospel of the Lord. Long time ago, I heard a riddle that uh, you might want to take home to your grandchildren if you hadn't heard of it. What's the only word that changes pronunciation when it's capitalized? Anybody? Job, job. <laughs> now that should make your day, right? <laughs> you can go home now. <laughs> well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I prepared a little something. I want to talk to you today a little bit about uh, a faith problem that bothers people of every age, and that's the apparent injustice of suffering. In our first reading today, we found Job, Job who had had a wonderful life. He had a large family. He had a huge farm. He had everything going for him. You might want to just open the book of Job when you go home from church today if you're not familiar with it and see all the stuff that he had. Well, as it turned out, according to the story, uh, God and, and Satan are looking down at the earth and God says, see that my friend Job over there? See how wonderful he is? See how he blesses me all the time? Satan says, well, yeah, sure he blesses you because you blessed him with everything that he could possibly want. Take that stuff away and he'll curse you to your face. God said, I don't think so. Job said, you just try it. So God gave Satan permission. I, I said Job before. God gave Satan permission to take everything away from Job and even to afflict his person. So today we find Job suffering terribly, terribly. He had lost his family. He lost his many possessions. He suffers all kinds of physical problems. And his friends had come to visit him. Well, what kind of friends are they? This has been going on for many chapters in the book of Job already. And they said to him again, if you had been better to God, you know none of this would have happened to you. Well, Job felt that he was innocent. He couldn't imagine anything that he did had done to God that was as bad that should take away all of this stuff. I'm innocent, he said. I love God. So today in uh, this reading, Job is asking his friends once again for a little pity and a little less condemnation. And he challenges them. What makes you think you can speak for God? And then he gets real graphic to, to emphasize his innocence. He said, would that my 
words of innocence were chiseled in a rock and outlined in, in lead. That's what they used to do in those days. They would, when they had a really, well, when they wanted to make a memorial, they would, um, kind of like gravestones, they would chisel into the, the rock, but then they would outline their chiseling in, in lead so that it would be more visible and it would be terribly permanent as well. Um, so what he's saying is, I know my vindicator is on my side. I'm not afraid of God. I know I'm going to see God, and I can't wait until that happens. This kind of faith in a loving God, even in the midst of suffering, can help us to deal with our sufferings when, we come, when they come. The good news is, that Satan and God don't have the kind of conversation that we about us that they apparently had about Job. What does happen is that Satan can tempt us to do things that disappoint God, and many times after they disappoint God, they disappoint us as well. And whether or not we give in to these temptations, we are going to face difficulties in this life. This is not a perfect life. We're waiting for that. We're working toward that. That's called heaven. But when the difficulties come, our job is to try to do what Job, what, uh, Job did, to know that God is God and we are not. And then we've got the added benefit of knowing that our God is a loving God, not a vengeful God, and that God is always at our side in our suffering. So we can turn to God for strength and for justice as Jesus taught us. One last thought here. Don't expect your friends to have the answers to your suffering. Uh, they don't always have the whole truth, especially when it comes to knowing God, God's will, and God's actions. God bless you. So we bring our prayers to our God. We pray, pray first of all this morning for our church, for her leaders, for Pope Francis and for Bishop Ricken, uh, for Father Dennis and Deacon Jeff. We pray for um, all people, and including those who are suffering persecution because they happen to be Christian. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our country in the midst of... Uh, a kind of a messy election. We pray that justice uh, and right will prevail. We pray to the Lord. We pray for um, our world suffering from the coronavirus. We pray for those who have the illness. We pray for those who are fighting it. We pray for those who are inconvenienced by it. That's about all of us. We pray uh, that there may be a resolution soon to this problem of the virus, we pray to the Lord. We pray for our farmers who are bringing in their uh, crops, that, uh, that they may realize that all of this is gift to them uh, from God uh, in cooperation with their hard work, we pray to the Lord. Our Mass today is offered for Joyce Sipiorski, and uh, for her and for her family, we pray to the Lord. And take a moment to uh, allow you to offer your prayer. So Lord God, sometimes we get impatient with our suffering. Sometimes we're confused and we're tempted to look elsewhere than to you, to you for relief. We ask you to be with all those people who are suffering today that they may know that your love and have confidence in your steadfastness. We pray to the Lord. Oh, we, we ask you uh, to hear this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we proclaim your wonders in St. Therese, O oh, oh Lord, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits were pleasing to you, so to our dutiful service may find favor in your sight through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. <coughs> for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with uh, St. Therese and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. <clears throat> May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <laughs> Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection and mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ give peace, I pray to God. Give me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord, kindle in us the force of that love with which St. Therese dedicated herself to you and longed to obtain your mercy for all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of the Lord. And our last song is number 483. Start with verse 4. Let strife among us be unknown. Let all contention cease. Be members of the glory that be ours God's holy peace. Let us recall that in our midst Wells, God's begotten Son, as members of his body joined, we are in Christ made one. No race nor creed can love exclude, if honored in God's name, our family embraces all, whose Father is the same.